Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Walking Dead Episode 7 video. Totally great lead in to what's going to be a crazy finale. I was a little surprised where they left each of the groups in terms of dramatic tension. Most of my focus is on Rick's group right now, but there's still some big stuff that could happen with the other two groups. All the characters got at least one really good moment, and we probably saw what was the best improvised walker weapon all season long. Real quick heads up, new round of the giveaway starts now. It's just a $20 Amazon gift card. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. Super simple. So careful for spoilers in case you haven't seen the episode yet, starting with top five moments. Number five, Carl versus Gabriel. You could also call this Gabriel versus everyone left at the church. Gabriel versus Judith. That's actually a nice thought. He's so scared of everything. He probably is scared of that little baby too. If you were a little confused, obviously he couldn't kill that walker at the end because he saw the cross. I'm guessing that he probably knew that person too, that woman, but it looks like he turned around and went back to the church. He's such a coward, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't have the courage to go out on his own. I haven't heard anything about Seth Gilliam leaving the show or not coming back for the second half of the season, so I don't know if he'll survive or if something big is going to happen. I don't think that they're going to let the finale go by without something crazy going on at the church. There's really the three different groups at this point. We have Rick's group, where the main action is going to be. Then we have Carl, Michonne, Judith, and Gabriel. And then we have Abraham's group, which is now kind of like Maggie's group. Hands down, favorite moment was Carl murder splaining how to push a machete through someone's skull. Sometimes they're not as soft as the other ones. I would say of all the people, he probably has more sense than most. I mean, he's probably a pretty messed up little kid. I mean, I see him snapping at some point, like father, like son. But for now, he seems pretty solid. There was a brief moment when I was proud of Gabriel for fighting that walker off, but then he went back to old Gabriel when he couldn't kill her. He just seems like the kind of person who has suicide written all over his face. He is totally going to burn in hell no matter what, so I don't think that committing suicide would leave him off any worse. It was kind of funny to see them ripping down his church though. It was like they were ripping down his faith, or his sanity, which I guess are kind of the same thing. Number four, Abraham's group picks up the pieces. Actually, this should be Abraham's group becomes Maggie's group or gone fishing. There was that big WTF mullet lies reveal last episode, so I can understand why they made this story a little bit more hopeful, but I don't think they would allow things to continue through the finale without something crazy happening with that group. And we saw that sign at the end, buckle up, it's the law. I'm wondering what that means. Sometimes when I see things like that, I think they're referring to other parts of the story, like they're talking about the officers, or they're talking to the audience, like we need to buckle up because the story is gonna get freaking crazy. I think that there's a literal interpretation to that. I don't think it's all metaphor. Thinking about it a little bit more too now, I'm actually wondering if they're just going to try and crash that fire truck through all those walkers. Like that's why they need to buckle up. It was really nice to get Rosita's backstory too. I feel like it's a good moral tale for telling people that you think that they're important. It's funny that she said that Abraham was the first person to tell her he needed her. Now that that's gone to shit, Glenn's picked up the slack. She and Eugene will both be useful in whatever new situation they find themselves in. Tear, of course, totally amazing is comedic relief. Fist bump it. Tattoo it on your fist, then bump it. She's like the self-appointed morale officer now. I feel like she's actually come a long way since season four Tara. I don't know that she's completely forgiven herself, but I think all this trouble with Eugene has taken her mind off of it. She seems pretty well adjusted. Usually it's people like Sasha, the people that are dealing with really crazy stuff that you need to watch out for. They're the ones that make terrible decisions. Speaking of which, Abraham looks like he's slowly coming to, but his hand, didn't you see when he picked that water bottle up, he used his messed up hand. They keep showing that hand. I feel like something crazy is going to happen with that at some point. We can just think of the hand as like the red herring right now, or like the ginger herring, I guess. Number three, Beth saves Carol. Anytime they give weaker characters big hero arcs, I get a little bit nervous because it could be foreshadowing for something really terrible happening. I haven't seen any overt spoilers about characters dying, but all the theories are on Carol and Beth right now. So I feel like everyone is watching their scenes extra careful just to see if there's any potential clues, which is all over now because we finally got the teaser for the next episode and that's it. There's nothing left. In terms of character development, I feel like Beth has grown quite a bit at the hospital. She is strong. I mean, she was strong before. She just proved it to Dawn. The whole scene with her working the grift, totally hilarious. It's like Orange is the New Black, Walking Dead edition. She's like the Taylor Schilling of Walking Dead now. Don't you feel like Walking Dead would have turned into Orange is the New Black just a little bit if they'd have stayed at the prison? That would actually have been a pretty funny show to watch. I mean, Walking Dead isn't meant to be a funny show, but you do get really hilarious moments. Number two, Rick's group captures the police officers. So the title of the episode is Crossed, as in you have crossed the line. 
that usually tells you who the villains are, like the people who go crazy. Right now, though, that seems like Rick and the survivors. Mostly just Rick, though. He just has murder written all over his face. I just, I love the way that they flip things in this episode. It made the police officers seem like the voice of reason and Rick seem like the crazy man. That's going to be really important for the finale. Like they're really trying to present both these groups as fairly equal. Like we're in a situation, we're trying to make the best of it. Let's try and do this the right way so we can all walk away and sleep in our own beds tonight. Some of my favorite scenes from this whole storyline, Daryl's improvised walker weapon, totally amazing, totally disgusting at the same time. He basically grabbed it like a bowling ball. If you've ever seen Mystery Men, Janine Garofalo has this bowling ball with a skull inside it. It just reminded me of that a little bit. All those walkers that they had littered in that area, they were calling rotters, but really they were all melting. And if you were confused as to why they were so melted, it was just the heat from the sun. That was why Maggie put the covering over Eugene, just so that he wouldn't get super sunburnt. Just think of it as a PSA for using sunblock, even though we are nowhere near beach season. Sasha and Tyrese also, Totally touching moment. I love the way they panned out though to all the walkers and it went from like really touching hug to super gross touching hug. It's just like the walking dead, you know, to give you this really tender moment and then pan over to someone rotting in the street. Just like, yeah, that makes you feel good inside. Really good right in here. And my number one WTF moment, police officer totally pulls a fast one on Sasha and gets away. Just to be clear, before the shit went down, I think there was a chance that their plan could have worked, like the compromise. Now though, they still have two police officers but the one police officer is gonna get back and inform the hospital what's going on so they can prepare, like they can prepare their defenses. Meaning that they've taken away the element of surprise. Like that was what Rick was depending on. Really the whole thing is like Rick's plan versus everyone else's plan. Rick is like, I wanna go in and shoot everyone and everyone else, his group, as well as the police officers, their veritable enemies say, no, no, we can totally do this another way. Especially Daryl, even though he's super pissed about losing Carol, he's still the same character that he was in the last episode. The one that pulled Carol back from doing the same type of thing that Rick is getting ready to do. How our little Daryl has become a man. Carl is kind of on the same arc too. It's like the South Park situation where the adults are being crazy and the young people are the sane ones. I will say I'm happy Sasha didn't get pushed out that window. I thought that that was what was going to happen whenever he walked up behind her. I knew he was totally going to pull a fast one. I just didn't know if he was going to knock her out or push her right off the ledge. There are definitely a few characters I don't think are going to die in the finale. The weird thing about predicting Walking Dead deaths is, is that it seemed like over the last five years, the show wants to keep as many people as possible. Like the more people it keeps, the more stories it can tell, the easier it is to prolong the show. Speaking of deaths, I feel like Beth and Carol are still at the top of the hit list. Emily Kinney has been posting so much of her music stuff that it makes me feel weird. It's like, yeah, they're getting ready to go on winter break. So all the actors are going to have extra time to do whatever they do whenever they're not doing Walking Dead. But you always wonder, you're like, hmm, maybe she's preparing for another career. Breaking the two though, I still feel like Carol is higher on the hit list than Beth is. Like if anyone's going to go, I feel like the best chance is on Carol just because she's so incapacitated right now. It's not like she's going to wake up and just go ape shit on everyone. Knowing Carol, that might not stop her from trying, which would actually be pretty interesting to watch. If she's going to take anyone out, I would love to see her take out that crazy doctor. Maybe some of his gerbils too. Maybe take him out with a gerbil. That would be great. That's actually a thought. Using a gerbil as an improvised weapon. That's actually a really good jumping off point. So what was your favorite moment from the episode? And let me know. Here's my big question for you. What's the next improvised weapon you want to see on the show? Personally, I really just want to see a gerbil used as a weapon. Like either have Beth or someone just shove one down someone's throat. Overall, I gave the episode a solid B+. I totally love the tension that they're building in Atlanta, but I felt like they kind of dropped the ball in the other areas. It's like there's no way that Abraham's group driving that fire truck through a bunch of walkers is going to be as crazy as what's going to go down at the hospital. And who knows what's going to happen back at the church. I feel like of all the things they could do with Carl's group to match the tension or the energy of the other groups would be to have Gabriel just totally smash someone up like a walker or some intruder. There's been no signs that that's going to happen. Either Gabriel's going to have some sort of hero moment or Carl's just going to straight up kill him. Really his only purpose on the show right now has been as a improvised inn keeper for the survivors and they're already tearing down the inn. Carl said it himself, you can't stay in one place for too long anymore, meaning that they're not going to be there in the second half of the season. So either Gabriel's going to have to man up and go with them or he's going to have to die. Irregardless, he cannot stay at that church. I'm totally a fan of Seth Gilliam as an actor, but I feel like his character just has not been serviced really well this season so far. He is a big character in the comics. It's totally possible they could take him that route. 
Usually when new actors are signed to The Walking Dead, they have options in their contract in case the producers want to use them later. Like when people are brought on as guest stars in season five, sometimes they have options to become regulars in season six and so on and so on. I will say for all the people that are watching for behind the scenes picks, they're still filming episodes. So you can actually like see the actors walking around on sets and doing stuff. There are some things that lead me to believe, you know, certain characters that we think might die are not gonna die. I'll just caution you if you're looking at those, the characters could be on set for flashback scenes. Just because they're on set doesn't mean their character's still alive. All in all, great episode, great lead into the finale. A lot of questions raised, especially the buckle your seatbelt thing. But again, I think that they're just going to drive that fire truck right through that herd of walkers. They made it sound like it's going to be some sort of slip and slide, some sort of gooey, disgusting slip and slide. I will try and do some extra videos. I'll definitely be doing some bonus videos when it's off the air, when it's on break. It'll come back pretty quickly, though. But feel free to leave me any requests for special bonus videos that you really want to see and be sure to subscribe to get everything. I will continue the giveaway in the off season. Don't worry, just every time I post a bonus video, I'll just do a new round of the giveaway. Just like normal, Q&A tomorrow. And in case you haven't seen me talk about it, I have new mobile links up here. So if you're on your mobile phone or on a tablet, it's the same links that I add over here. So nice and simple. Right now, click here for the q and I'll add that tomorrow. And click here for last week's episode. Thank you so much for watching. So let's all high five. I'll see you guys tomorrow.